Hi, I'm Mr. Ablett. I'm your new band teacher. Today we're going to be talking about the clarinet, how uh, to put it together, how to hold it, how to make your first sounds on it, how to look after it, a little bit about how to read music. There's going to be a ton of stuff that we go through in today's video. Uh, and you know what, you may need to watch this video more than once. Uh, there's going to be a lot of information that I'm going to throw at you and uh, it's really going to help, uh, especially for the, the startup for the band in September and October. Um, watching this video and playing along is going to be really, really helpful to you. Okay, so uh, if you have your clarinet handy, hey, good job. If you don't, run and grab it real quick. I'll wait for you. Okay, so hopefully you're back with your clarinet now. And um, if your clarinet looks anything like mine, it comes in a case that kind of looks like that. <clears throat> okay, I got my name on it because uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, musicians at the school that have the same kind of case. And I don't want mine getting mixed up with theirs. So I put my name on stuff to keep it organized. Okay, so first thing, um, don't open the case upside down. That's bad. You open it like this, then all the stuff is going to come out and fall on the floor. And there's a chance your instrument might get damaged. And we really, really don't want that. So um, this is how I open my, my case. Your case might be similar or just a little bit different, but that's all the different parts of the clarinet. Okay, so we're going to go through them one at a time. And we're going to talk about the different um, parts of the clarinet or the different uh, clarinet anatomy, okay? So uh, why don't I just, instead of holding them up and like this and being awkward, <laughs> I'll uh, hold them up one at a time and uh, just hold them up to the camera. Okay, so we'll start with the top of the clarinet. This is the mouthpiece, okay? This is the mouthpiece cap. We're going to talk about the function of the mouthpiece cap later on. Uh, this is a little clamp that comes with your clarinet. Mine's going to look different than yours. I've got a fancy one called a Rovner. Okay, that's the brand name. And um, mine's fancy. I spent 30 bucks on it and it's awesome and I love it. Yours probably looks like a little metal clamp that goes around the clarinet, uh, excuse me, goes around the mouthpiece. Okay, and that's something that's going to hold the reed on. Okay, and I'll explain what the reed is in a minute. Okay, so you've got the mouthpiece. You've got the ligature, which is the clamp, and you've got the mouthpiece cap. Cool? Good so far. All right. Now, there are two long pieces. Oh, excuse me. There is the barrel of the clarinet, okay? That's the part that the mouthpiece goes into, okay? It's the short little piece. Now, there are two long pieces. There is this one, which is called the upper joint, and this one, which has the four paddles on it, is called the lower joint. All right, so this is the upper joint, and this is the lower joint. Cool? All right, I'm not going to put it together just yet. I'm going to show you how to do that. And then this part, being bell-shaped, we call it the bell. Ding dong. Okay, so that's the bottom of the clarinet where the sound comes out. All right, uh, in addition to that, you probably have, let me just reach over here and see if I've got one in my handy dandy drawer. No, I don't, oh, I do. Okay, so you will likely have uh, a couple of reeds that came with your clarinet rental or purchase, okay? Mine are wrapped in foil because I get fancy reeds, a little bit more expensive because they play nicer and I like that. Okay, so yours probably come in individual little packages too. Um, what I would suggest that you get is for like, I don't know what, a two bucks, four bucks, uh, a reed holder. Okay, and this is a little plastic device where you can put two reeds on one side and two reeds on the other. And what it does is that it holds the reeds nice and flat. This is the part of your instrument that does the vibrating. And once you're going to put it in your mouth and it's going to get all wet. And what does wood do when it gets wet? It goes all wavy, okay? And the tip of these reeds are going to get all wavy if you just put them away on the mouthpiece. You have to take them off the mouthpiece every time you finish playing, okay? So what I do is that I have my little reed holder. And what it does is that it keeps the reeds nice and flat and keeps them pressed in there. And what it also does is that it protects the reeds while it's in the case. You can see I've got four reeds, and I've actually got them numbered. Okay, 
so that I know which reed I'm playing on at any given time, okay? I guess I should hold it that way. One, two, three, and four. And uh, I just rotate through my reeds and they last a lot longer doing it that way, okay? So one of these is gonna prolong the life of your reeds. You always wanna make sure you have some extra reeds with you because you're gonna chip them. They're gonna get broken or they're just gonna get old and you're gonna wanna throw them out and you're gonna wanna get new ones, okay? Um, and by the way, there's just something that, you know, I've noticed woodwind players do. When they're finished with a reed and it's time to throw it out, they snap it in half. Good practice, you should do that, okay? Snap that reed in half so we know that one's garbage. And then put your reed in the garbage. Don't just throw it on the floor because no one wants to pick up a reed that's been in your mouth and throw it away for you, okay? Uh, you should also have one of these guys, which is a swab, okay? And I'll show you how to use that at the end of the video. And you should have a thing that looks like a little tube of uh, chapstick. Uh, and this is called cork grease. And we're gonna use that cork grease right now, okay? So you can open up your cork grease and you can apply just a little bit to all the cork surfaces. I'm gonna put some on my hands too. It's gonna get all sticky and ugh. Okay, but I prefer that my clarinet works really, really well. Uh, and I can just wipe my hands off on a cloth that I have close by. Okay, so there's uh, one cork joint called a tenon joint on your mouthpiece. And there's one on the bottom of the lower joint. And there's two on the upper joint. You see one there and one there. So there's four cork surfaces to look after. Okay. Now, you don't have to do this every single time you play the instrument. Okay, that's overkill. Um, but once a week, yeah. Whenever you notice it's starting to look a little bit dry, okay? How do you know if it's looking dry? Well, the cork on your clarinet is gonna change color. Okay, the cork on my clarinet is nice dark brown, sort of a mahogany color. Okay, if it starts looking kind of sandy color, okay, uh, then it's starting to dry out. And dry cork is going to crack and it's gonna fall off your instrument. And that's bad news. Okay, uh, so let's do this. Why don't we put the mouthpiece together first, okay? You know what? I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to put the instrument together first. I think that makes more sense. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to start with the bottom, with the bell. Now, you're going to see me in class, and I'm going to one of my clarinets together, and I'm going to put it down, and it's going to balance on the bell. Okay? The reason why I can do this is because I have one of these. This is a clarinet stand. It's, you're probably not going to have one of these when you first start playing clarinet. That's okay. Uh, so when you put your clarinet down, would you put the whole clarinet on its side, on the floor, okay? Maybe on top of your case so that your, your mouthpiece doesn't touch the ground. That's gross. But if you put it on top of your case, that way it can't get knocked over. If you balance it on your bell, it's going to fall over every time. You're going to see me do it because I've got the clarinet stand, okay? So don't balance it on your bell. That's a bad idea unless you have a stand like I do. Okay. So here's what I'm gonna do. I've got my bell and I've got my lower joint. I'm going to hold it with, in my right hand, with one, two, three fingers covering the one, two, three keys, just like you play the clarinet. Imagine that. Okay, now I'm gonna put this together and I'm going to turn it gently without crushing the keys with your superhuman strength. Okay, really important that we look after the keys on this clarinet, if they get bent, I can't tell if it's something that you're doing or if it's your clarinet that's misbehaving and needs to go into the shop to get repaired by a qualified technician, okay? So let's look after the keys on our instrument all year long so we never have to worry about whether the clarinet is broken or whether it's something that we need to do as musicians. Okay, so here's the top joint of the clarinet. I'm gonna put my fingers right over top of the keys. Now, there's a special key right here that I want you to pay attention to. Do you see that little key bouncing up and down? See it there? That's called the bridge key. The bridge key is the bridge between the top joint and the bottom joint. So what I'm going to do is that I'm gonna push this key down so that the bridge key bounces up and down, and I'm gonna slide my clarinet together so that my bridge key doesn't bind 
okay? And all of my keys in the front should be basically in a straight line. You'll be able to tell if they're in a straight line or not. Okay, now with my clarinet almost all together, I've got my bell, my lower joint, got my upper joint. Now I can put the barrel on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the, the bell and I'm gonna place it on my knee. And now I can just push on the barrel, it goes right together, super easy. Okay, so now my clarinet is almost all together. I just need to put the mouthpiece together. Okay, are you doing this with me? That's awesome, thanks for doing that. Okay, so here comes the fun part. I want you to take out a reed. I'm gonna take out my number one reed. And I'm gonna put it in my mouth. Okay, the reed's gotta be wet. I was just gonna squeak and squeal and misbehave. You're gonna have to get it really wet. I haven't played clarinet in a long time, so I'm gonna get it really soaked. Now I'm gonna turn it around so I can get the thick part of the reed nice and wet too, okay? Now while we're doing that, I'm gonna put my mouthpiece together. So I take the cap of the mouthpiece off and I'm gonna loosen off my ligature. Okay, now I'm gonna get real close to the camera here so you can see what I'm doing. With the ligature on, I'm gonna slide the thick part of the reed, not the skinny tip, but the part that has the bark of the reed on it. I'm gonna slide that right inside the mouthpiece, just like that. Okay. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is that I'm gonna make sure my ligature isn't super high on the mouthpiece. If my ligature is too high on the mouthpiece, like that, it's going to choke off the part of the mouthpiece that makes the vibration. It's the, it's the source of music on your instrument. So we wanna let it be free and let it vibrate as it's supposed to. So I'm gonna push my ligature down, 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 down. My mouthpiece actually has a little line on it at the top and two little lines at the bottom. So you can see that the ligature is supposed to live between the top line and between the two bottom lines. Okay, and I'm gonna snug that up just a little bit. Now we can talk about uh, the placement of the reed. Okay, now, placement of the reed, super important, okay? You're gonna get a real sense of how to do this uh, the right way after doing it a few times. Okay, first of all, you wanna make sure that the reed is super straight, perfectly straight, like within a millimeter. You wanna be really, um, persnickety about this. You want to be really detail oriented about making sure your reed is nice and straight. Now, if it's straight, that's awesome. Now it has to be the right length, okay? So that is too short. Do you see how the tip of the reed doesn't actually touch the mouthpiece, the tip of the mouthpiece right there? So I'm going to scooch that up just a little bit and show you that's too long. See how the reed sticks up from behind? You can't tell from that point. Well, you can a little bit. You can sort of see through the reed, right? Especially when I press on it like that, you can see the edge, the tip of the mouthpiece showing through the tip of the reed. So that that's gonna create all sorts of weird sounds. So you want it just right. It's gotta be that Goldilocks moment, right? Not too hard, not too soft, not too hot, not too cold. It's gotta be just right. Nice and straight and just a little tiny tip of the reed should show, okay? Now I'm gonna snug that mouthpiece, excuse me, the ligature down nice and firm. Now, when I put it in my mouth, I should be able to make the mouthpiece crow, okay? This will tell you if the reed is vibrating properly. <coughs> really annoying, isn't it? <laughs> it's not a very pretty sound, I'll, I'll grant you. But this is how we know that the mouthpiece is working properly. Okay, now we can put it together with our clarinet. Again, we're not gonna squeeze those keys. We're gonna balance it on our knee and we're gonna slide that right together, okay? Wow, sounds like a clarinet, that's so cool. All right, so let's talk now about how to hold the instrument, okay? And where to put your hands. So really important, this instrument is designed to work with human beings, as you might imagine, okay? And whether you're right or left-handed, it doesn't matter. This is the way you hold the clarinet, okay? Everybody holds it the same way, because it's designed that way. So your left hand goes on top, and your right hand goes on the bottom. Left on top, 
right on the bottom. Okay, with my right hand, I put my thumb under the thumb rest. By the way, I've got a little rubber pad. I'm not going to take it off. It's kind of stuck on there. And that just makes it a little bit more comfortable for my right hand because you're holding the weight of the whole instrument on your right thumb. Okay, so that little pad is handy. Also, you can see on my mouthpiece, I have got a little rubber pad right here. And that makes it very comfortable for me to play as well, to have a rubber pad on the mouthpiece. These are like hmm, 50 cents, I think. And these are a couple of bucks. So a lot of the accessories for clarinet, super cheap. Okay. So when you go to the store, see if you can get those things. It'll make your life a whole lot easier. All right. So right thumb on the thumb rest. And then you can see there's three circle keys there. One, two, three. There you go. And your pinky does all of these ones right here. Now for your left hand, the thumb covers the hole on the back. And then sometimes you're going to be using the register key by covering the hole and just rocking the tip of your thumb to make that open and close like that. Okay, but you're never going to be playing just that with that open. You're going to have to cover that and open it at the same time. Okay, and then on the front with your thumb covering the hole, you can see there's three holes. One, two, three. Simple. Okay, and then your left index finger does that key and that key and your right index finger does those. There's all these extra keys that you get to hmm, play with on the clarinet. It's totally fun. Okay, so that's how you put your, your hands on the instrument. Putting the instrument down, remember how to do it? Lay it on its case, never balance on the bell, okay? You can put it on your chair if you want to, but I actually had a student who sat on their instrument once, so, you know, you don't want your, uh, your clarinet to be banana shaped. It just doesn't work that well. Okay. Okay. We talked about reed position. It's got to be perfect or else it's not going to work properly. Okay. So if you're trying to make a sound on the clarinet, you're just going <laughs> and it's not making the, or it's making this awful squealy sound, um, check your reed position or maybe the tip of your reed is warped and you need to uh, try a different reed. Okay. Next, embouchure. Okay, embouchure is this fancy word, which means the way we form our mouth to play an instrument. And every wind instrument is different with the, the way we form our mouth, okay? Um, so let's talk about how to do the clarinet. So I'm just gonna remove the, the mouthpiece and barrel. And here's what I want you to do. Uh, we're gonna put about a third of the mouthpiece in our mouth. Just like that. We're gonna put our teeth right on top of the mouthpiece. That's why it's nice to have that little rubber pad there. Right, it doesn't make my whole head vibrate when I play the clarinet, okay? So you want about a third to a half of the, of the reed inside your mouth. Now, uh, so on top, you want teeth. On the bottom, you don't want teeth. It's really bad. It's like nails on a chalkboard when you put teeth on your, directly on your reed. So what we're going to do is that we're going to take a little layer of the shiny skin from the inside of your lip and we're going to create a pillow right on top of your bottom teeth, okay? And so we're going to put our top teeth on top of the mouthpiece and we're going to put a little lip pillow over our bottom teeth, not our entire lip, oh, like that. Just the tiniest little bit, just to cover those sharp bottom teeth that we all have, okay? So teeth on the top. And then a pillow on the bottle, and then a nice seal around the outside. And that's the sound you should get with the, uh, the mouthpiece and the barrel together. Go ahead and try and make that sound now. It's okay. If it squeaks and makes a funny sound, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You'll learn. It takes a while. Okay? So I'm going to put my clarinet back together. Okay, now, teeth on the top of the mouthpiece. A little pillow on the bottom. Just a tiny little one, doesn't need a big pillow. And then the seal around the outside. So those are your first sounds on the instrument. That's really cool. 
So I'm going to make a sound and then I want you to make the sound after me. So I'm just going to put my, my thumb on the thumb rest and then balance the clarinet in my mouth. I'm not going to use any of the keys. So repeat after me. Now, you can see that I'm using a lot of muscle to really hold my sound together on the clarinet. Clarinet, you have to be very strong to play the clarinet, okay? And if you're not strong yet, hey, it's your first day. It's okay, all right? You see these muscles, how I flex them together? How I use the strength of my jaw against the reed, against that pillow? Okay, that's what your embouchure should look like. If you have your phone close by or a mirror close by, you can see what your embouchure looks like when you put the, the mouthpiece in your mouth. Think teeth on the bottom, pillow on the bottom, uh, an airtight seal all the way around, and then strong. Mm. I'd like you to flex your chin, a nice flat chin like this, not a bungee chin like that. And that's gonna create a nice pretty sound, okay? So we're gonna learn our first few notes we're going to be going through these in class one at a time. So if you can't get them all on the first day, don't worry about it. It's going to be okay. But uh, just for the sake of the video, I thought it would be fun for us to play a song together. So we're going to learn three notes. The first one is this one. It's called C. All right. It looks like that on the staff. And if you were to draw the fingering chart of the clarinet, this is what it looks like. That's the hole on the back. Okay. And then one, two, three fingers in the left hand. So there's the hole on the back. One, two, three. If you've got, you know, hands of a grade seven, and you should, <laughs> if you've got somebody else's hands, that's really bad. But if you've got the hands of grade seven, you probably have smaller hands than me. See, my hands are huge. I have big man hands. And so for me, covering these holes, easy. No problem. I got sausages for fingers, okay? Big, huge hands, see, giant. So for you, you might have uh, narrower fingers than me. You might have smaller hands than me. And so if you cover the hole just part way, it's gonna squeal. It's gonna freak out on you and make all this weird, cloudy, weird sounds. So if you're getting a sound like that, make sure that you are sealing those holes on the clarinet, okay? So I'm going to play a C. Remember, there's the, the back key, and my right thumb is holding the clarinet, okay? By the way, I'm not holding the clarinet like this. I'm holding it with the tip of my thumb, okay? That, that makes a big difference with when you're trying to play notes in the right hand, okay? Your right hand might get a little bit tired. That's okay. All right, take a break, and then come back at it later. So here we go, we're gonna play a C together. I'll play it first, and then you play it after me. Ready? Your turn. Good, my turn. Great job, great job. So if you're not able to make a sound yet, don't worry about it, it's okay, it's okay. Come and talk to me in band class. There might be something that you're doing that um, that you don't quite perceive yet, but I'll be able to see it from a mile away and go, ah, here's what it is, right? You're doing something weird, right? It's, it's the first day on a clarinet, everything's weird. It's hard for you to know. Uh, but I've been doing this since I was your age, so I've learned a couple of things along the way and I'll help you with it, okay? So keep trying, and if things aren't working out, come and talk to me. Promise? Promise? Put your hand up. Say I promise. Okay, good. Good job. Let's learn the next note. This is a D. It's important that you memorize these notes. Okay? Look at where it is on the staff. Do you see it there? Okay, it's right below the staff. You need to know the name of the note, and you need to know the fingering of the note. So D is simple. It looks like a C, but you lift that finger. Okay? Here's a D. Your turn. All right. 
Now, one of the great bits of wisdom that my private teacher told me when I was a student was that you always must play with a beautiful sound, the most beautiful sound that you can make. Always think about the beauty of the tone before you start playing. Even if you can play super fast and all this amazing stuff, if you have an ugly sound, nobody wants to listen to an ugly sound, okay? So even on the very first day, I want you to think about beautiful tone and do your absolute best every time you're, you're trying to play your instrument, cool? All right, let's move on to note number three. It's called E, there it is. First line E, thumb, index finger, ready? So if your sound is, you're still struggling a little bit with your sound, experiment, right? Adapt. If you've got maybe too much reed in your mouth, try playing with just one millimeter less. Little tiny changes, not a big, huge change. That's not going to help you, but a little tiny change. Maybe you're not using enough reed in your mouth. Like, not enough reed sounds like this. It sounds like, Oh, it sounds, sounds like it's 150 years old, right? It sounds like Yoda trying to sing or something. I don't know. <laughs> it sounds sandy and, and lacking in vibrancy, right? But if I put too much mouthpiece in my mouth, too much reed vibrating. It does that and it freaks out and it makes all these weird harmonics. But when I find just that right spot, music. Okay? So now let's review our three notes and we're going to play a little concert for, you know, if, if your cat comes in the room, I play a concert for the cat. He's never had a concert. You don't take him anywhere. Okay? So uh, here's a C. It's one, two, three fingers with the thumb on the back. And there's a D. One, two. And there's an E. Okay? And we're going to, uh, you know what, I'll talk about that in a minute. We're going to play our very first song, okay? And it's Mary Had a Little Lamb. You know how that one goes. Starts on an E, and goes to C, uh, excuse me, goes to D, and then goes to C, and then D, and then E. Okay, let's play it together. One, two, three. <laughs> How'd you do? Did you play it? If it wasn't perfect today, that's okay. But if you got even some of the notes, hey, congratulations, that's awesome. Great job. All right, now I have this slide in here because you heard me starting all of the notes, tonguing all the notes, the tip of my tongue on the very front part of the reed. So let me get something to point with here. Okay. So I don't want you to tongue on this part of the reed, on the very tip of the reed. I want you to tongue on the flat part of the reed right here, okay? And I want you to say like, tu or te, tu, 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 That's how we play our notes on the clarinet when you want to tongue them. or my tongue, you can actually feel the tip of the reed on my tongue, okay? The other way to change notes on the clarinet is by slurring. And that's when we move our fingers, but we don't use our tongues at all. And it makes this long, lovely, beautiful, smooth sound.
Okay, so you can experiment playing both, both ways. Play it tongued and play it slurred. Those are the two different ways to play notes. All right. Now, okay, now we're going to use our swab. So um, let's take our reed off of our mouthpiece. I always take the reed off like that because I want to protect the tip of the reed. I really don't want to break these. They cost money, don't they? So <laughs> unless your mom and dad and older brother who knows how to drive a car can drive you to the music store every weekend, let's protect those reeds, okay? Let's look after our stuff. Now, I'm going to take the mouthpiece off. I didn't talk very much about the mouthpiece cap. The mouthpiece cap is what we put on the, the clarinet when we're away from the instrument, but we want to keep the reed on, uh, and it keeps the reed from getting chipped and broken. Okay, so if we're going to, when we're going to do our first concert, um, you're going to put your instrument together, you're going to put that mouthpiece cap on the clarinet, and then you go and take your seat on the performing space. And that's why we have a mouthpiece cap. Okay, super important. Okay, so now I'm going to take my swab, which has a little weight on the end, and a string, and a little cloth. Okay, and we're going to look after our clarinet. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to hold it upside down, and we're going to put the weight through the bell. Oh, it's getting stuck on me. There. there we go. And it comes out the end. Okay. And now we just pull that through. There it goes. And it cleans the inside of the instrument so that there's no moisture left from our breath condensing inside the instrument. And there's no dirt inside. Certainly we don't want that. Okay. Also, just a, a note, if we have band class, I haven't gotten our schedule yet, so I don't know, but if we have our band class right after recess, when you've had a snack, or right after lunch, really important that um, we don't have any um, food, which is sort of left in our mouth. You know, you have a, a nice yogurt or something with lunch, and then you play your clarinet. You really, really don't want to have yogurt inside your clarinet. Trust me, okay? So just have a little drink of water before you come to band class. And uh, that's going to make sure that your clarinet um, works properly. It's nice and clean. Doesn't smell like old yogurt. That's really bad. Okay. I'll tell you some funny stories about, uh, about that kind of stuff when we have band class. Okay. So I hope you've enjoyed uh, working on your clarinet chops for the past half an hour. Don't forget, you can watch this video over and over again in case you missed something or in case something you haven't quite figured out. What, how does it, is it left hand on top, right hand on bottom? Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's right. That's what I said in the video. So uh, go back and review a few times and that's really going to put you way further ahead uh, than people that aren't going to be watching the video. Okay. So I hope you've had fun. Happy practicing. I'll see you in band class.